Hey, welcome to our Set Apart Conversations. As we go throughout our Set Apart sermon series, talking about the intersection of our faith and our work or our vocation, the stuff that we do with our lives, we want to take some time and sit down with a few people within our church community who really embody what it looks like to be set apart, to actually live their lives and carry out their work with a sense of calling and mission and what God has uh, purposed them to do. And I'm really excited today to be joined by somebody that I have a lot of respect for, and I'm excited to hear from my mom, Nancy Lambert. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, mom, as we get started, I, I want to first just ask and, and kind of hear from you, what does your work look like today? You are retired, kind of. I still feel like you're busier than I am, but what does work look like for you right now in this stage of your life? Well, at at this point in life, so I retired at the end of 2019. Yeah. And because of just the craziness of the season that followed after that, they they asked me to come back on three separate occasions just to kind of lend a hand. And um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it being with the people. Um, I was trying to manage volunteering at Slate and other volunteer. Like I was also a volunteer at the hospital in Brantford as well and managing that and working. and. Um, Anyway, so when that contract ended, the full-time contract ended at the end of April this past year, I was able to like slip into, you know, the things that I'm passionate about, the things that I really love. Not that I didn't love my job and the people, but um, I just really have a passion for children's ministry, for example. And so I've really been able to enjoy just spending time with uh, Slate families, uh, leadership team and the other workers, volunteers. and. Uh, getting things going that way. So that's what our life is kind of like right now. We're on a couple of other teams at Slate, and we absolutely love it. And you know that phrase that says, don't do life alone? Honestly, just 100%. That's We've just found so much fulfillment in being part of what's happening at Slate Church. Mm -hmm. And you know, just getting to be alongside some of the most amazing people we've ever met. Oh, that's really cool. So right now your work is basically a ton of volunteering this late, it sounds like, for the most part. Yes. That's cool. Um, within that, like you said, you're doing some family ministry stuff, you're leading within that. Uh, you mentioned like, some other teams and ways you're involved. Like, What would be just like breaking it down, like the different things that you're doing at church these days that you're involved with right now? Okay, well, um, we've had the opportunity and a really great privilege to um, get a local up and running, yeah. a 40 plus local. We started slow this past year and have just been building on that. I believe we have about 38 people actually kind of registered in our mm -hmm. local right now, and we're just developing our rhythms and getting to know people within the group. Yeah. Um, that's been super fun, really exciting to come along, 40 plus you know, group of people that we're at the kind of, a lot of us are at the same stage of life, uh, and we're just kind of doing life together a little bit, and uh, we have a study rhythm, and we're working on a serve rhythm, and. Um, we're enjoying the times we get together socially and it's just really nice too because we find that when we do come to church now there's so there's just such a bigger community of people that we connect with and are getting to get to know better mm -hmm. and yeah it's been yeah. really good um, we're also on the prayer oh sorry oh, yeah sorry okay so you're on the prayer team as well yes so local prayer team kids was there anything else that you're that you guys are doing right now no okay so Question for you in that. Sorry for interrupting. That's okay. But question that's probably going to embarrass you a little bit. I don't know if you're going to love the answer to this. How many hours a week do you think you're like serving or volunteering or doing church work right now? Ooh, that's Just a, a hard quick one. ballpark. I mean, I mean, at least 10 to 12 probably. Okay. I definitely know it's more than that a lot oh. of weeks. <laughs> you're yeah, probably not counting maybe. Sundays. <laughs> oh, no, not, no, just in prepping and yeah, yeah, maybe some Sundays. It just depends on, on whether you're serving two services or one yeah, and things yeah. like that. But, you know, around that. Okay. Mark. So you said minimum like 10 hours a week. Minimum. Yeah. Okay. I definitely know, like I've counted a couple weeks and it's definitely been closer to 20 a couple times, but. It just flies. Okay. So minimum <laughs> 10 hours a week you're serving. I think a lot of people would be, you know, getting to that stage, like dad's retired, you're retired, where it's just like vacations and like reading books and chilling out and I don't know, doing, there's a, the, the retirement home next door is actually having a 60 plus seniors prom. 
um, <laughs> this uh, coming up soon. So if you're interested, feel free no, to head out. But thank you. <laughs> why, why aren't you going to the seniors prom? Why is it that you guys have decided, like you and dad have said like, hey, like we're gonna actually fill our calendar and spend our time. And I see it, like we we're trying to go see a movie together and we couldn't because you had stuff on every night. But what has actually inspired you guys and why are you guys in this place where you're saying like, hey, like no, uh, yeah, we're retired, but we actually still see like we have this calling and this mission on our lives. Like what has motivated you guys to do this and to lean in in this way and, and make this choice? So you don't have to be doing all this stuff. No, that's true, but I mean, to be honest what what even started us being able to be involved with Teens at Slate Church yeah. was family ministries, to be honest. Yeah. And I was, um, during the pandemic, I was able to connect with Holly. Yeah. And at that point, um, you know, I said, if there's anything we can do, just let us know. I always felt like, even if there's not a lot we can do, every little bit that somebody can do is a help. Yeah. And it helps when you come along some alongside somebody. And um, so Holly gave us a list and she gave us packages and she said, can you deliver these to the families in our church? And so it was just a small number. It was it hardly took any time at all yeah. um, because she had had it spread out amongst a whole bunch of volunteers. So, yeah. I mean, that was the initiation and it was kind of one of those things like um, when you became aware of a need in the church, it's like, hey, I don't maybe have a lot of giftings or skills, but that's something I can do. Yeah. It's just one little thing that, you know, dad and I felt that we could possibly, we can lend a hand there. Yeah. And it was nice. They, you know, the um, Pastor Sarah Ruth, like she embraced that and yeah. she got us trained, um, plan to protect and we got our place checks in. And I just said, wherever we can be an extra pair of hands you just throw us in there right yeah. and there's been lots of opportunities like we had a family day event last year and there were so many opportunities for people to jump in and lots of people did yeah you know there was a creative team that pulled together all the great ideas and there was people that made the different games and the events and things like that but all throughout our time here there's been things like that that we've been able to be involved in and so we started out small mm. um but but to be honest like our our my boundaries grew a little bit mm. throughout this last couple of years where you know i've been able to help out in you know even more ways mm. um there's been a, a place for me is what i'm trying to say i guess and the same thing with locals um there was just some things that happened and i realized that a lot of people our age uh maybe weren't super involved in church and maybe didn't feel like they had a place and I saw some people, and one particular situation that really hit me hard was somebody that, you know, was in a really, really bad place. And I kept thinking, mm. if they had had a community of believers, people that could come alongside of them and just encourage them and comfort them, would they have taken that drastic step? And I just felt like, I, th I think probably now, this wasn't this, latest series no one else is coming that name when it first came out i wondered you know i didn't quite understand where it was coming from but man has it ever hit hard ever since because that was the thought i had dad and i had a couple years ago when even presented with the concept of maybe we could help out with a mm. local was maybe somebody else could come alongside or is, is going to come along and do that but nobody's showing up right now yeah. and so we thought okay if we take the first step other people will come along and you know the leadership will be what the leadership is and if it's not dad night that's okay yeah. there's something started now and it's just i feel like we're trying to develop a community where we can encourage and be a blessing to each other in our age group but also not just to us yeah. But to other families yeah. and to the students, we have a real, many of the people in our local have a real burden for students and for young families. Yeah. And we don't know what that looks like. We're just kind of finding a way. But I got to tell you, it's very exciting. Yeah. It really is. And we just met with a couple again yesterday that are just like, they're just so excited to get plugged in and, and to be part of what's happening at Slate. But not, but like also to be there for other people as well. Not yeah. just... It's not just a bless me little group of people getting together just to have a fun time. And we study together, we pray together, mm -hmm. and we're doing the socials together. Oh, that's so cool. And it's cool to hear um, just even your heart of like, hey, 
a while ago, it felt like no one else is coming for my age group. So I guess we'll step up and we'll lead this and take the charge. And it's cool to see even just like the fruit of that now where we've had so many people from your local who are stepping into leadership, who are serving in different ways across our church. We even had a Sunday recently where a couple newer people in that age group came out on a Sunday morning. And I think there was a certain point where it was like myself and me, like Pastor Jared and Beth, and we're like, you know, Pastor Brandon and Emma, we're like, we see somebody of that age range and we're like worried. It's like, all right, we, we got to go connect with them because we don't know who else is going to talk to them. And we barely had to talk to some of these people because they were just like meeting this person and meeting that person. And like, oh, we both have motorbikes. Let's chat about this. And like all these people and all these connections were being made. And it was super cool to see the community and the culture that's being built there. And I think a lot of that is based on your faithfulness and stepping out, um, which is cool. I also want to go back a little bit. So it's awesome that right now in this season, you've just been able to like pour yourself into like the body and the church. And what's cool is you're actually not just doing that. Like I know that you had some of your neighbors over for Diwali recently and they're like building connections in your community and all these different things too. But before this, you were working. You mentioned it briefly that you only recently retired. Before this, you were actually in a leadership position um, at Laurier doing administration there. Do you want to just like go through and tell me a little bit about that sort of stage of your career, working in higher education and what kind of job you had and what that role looked like and, and what that was for you, just like high level? Uh, well, I mean, um, it was a, a great, a great experience for me working at Laurier. And I started there in 2005. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just so cool to see God's hand when you look back mm -hmm. and things that I never really thought I would ever go for or expected to happen. And there's just gradual moves up. Yeah. And then in recent years, I, um, I had a great job. I was senior, senior administrative officer mm -hmm. for the Faculty of Human and Social Sciences. And basically, I was, you know, I worked very closely with the dean mm -hmm. and um, with the faculty. And I mean, I was in charge of budgets for the faculty, human resources yeah. for the faculty, course planning, course execution. Um, I mean, of course, I didn't do the hiring of faculty. I did the hiring of staff in my faculty. Yeah. But I mean, the hiring of faculty, you had to follow all the guidelines of the collective agreements. And like, we had to, to know what that all meant. Yeah. And working um, with unions, which sometimes with grievances with unions. But, <laughs> but I have to say, so. well, I, ac I have to say that was actually a great experience too, yeah. because um, we were a newer faculty and we had a lot to learn. And we, we just found we had people within the union, even though, you know, maybe we had done some things that weren't supposed to be done the way they were done. Right, sure. It was a learning experience. Yeah. And so you just build those relationships. And I mean, it was just a great experience. And so, I mean, it was um, a lot of leading in that mm -hmm. area, too. Yeah. And I had some amazing staff yeah. that I'm still quite connected with to this day, which I'm thankful for. Yeah. And I mean, even my, my, my most recent long-term contract that I was asked to help out with, it was through friendships yeah. from when I was senior yeah. admin officer. That's cool. And it's cool that you even like mentioned all the relationships you built because <clears throat> from what I understand, you were leading a pretty large staff team of people that were sort of reporting up to you mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Then you were also managing relationships um, kind of with the faculty is like it was a big part of your role like between the, you know the organization and the actual faculty members yes uh, and then you're also working with other faculties and other groups within the university and, and, and there's a lot of complex stuff you're weighing in the midst of all of that how do you feel like your faith factored in how do you feel like your identity as a child of God and a follower of Jesus and your calling and your purpose and your mission like these sorts of ideas how did they actually factor and weigh into your job and your career? What did that mean to you and look like to you? Well, I mean, to start with, when I got offered this position, it, at first it was a management position, mm -hmm. and I was offered it. I hadn't applied for it, but I was offered it. Yeah. And I was a bit anxious about it. So we did a lot of praying, talked to family members, and talked to some people, some mentors in my own yeah. life that I really admire and respect. And two of them, two uh, men, uh, pastors in our lives that we really love and respect, yeah. both said to us kind of the same kind of thing, like, how do you know it's not for such a time as this, that mm. God has called you to this position? And that stuck with me all those years. And, 
you know, you just take every opportunity you can. I, I was really blessed to be in a, a situation where, although I didn't have other, other believers around me, there was a mutual respect and understanding. Mm. And I could talk to them as easily about my faith as I'm speaking with you right now. Yeah. And I didn't, didn't feel condemnation or judgment or anything. Wow. And it was, and I, I had people come to me, um, a lot of faculty members even, mm -hmm. and staff members that would come to me for one-on-one -on -one meetings and just say, would you pray for me? And, wow. and things like that. So I worked with deans that were so open to my faith mm -hmm. and never, um, they never put it put it down in any way, and mm -hmm. yet they seem to admire it and respect it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was a. That's what I think was really good about it. In a university, you have to be very careful because, I mean, we 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 try to be politically correct, and but I never felt that I wasn't respected for my walk with the Lord, mm. and I never felt like I had to hide it either. Yeah. You know, it was uh, it was obvious I think to all people that. You know anybody that I had close encounters with? Yeah. That I lived a life of faith, not perfectly, of course, but you know what I mean. Like mm -hmm. I love Jesus and and thank God every day for the life He's given us. And do you think that that your like your relationship with Jesus and some of those fruits of the Spirit that He was building inside of you? Um, did you find that those came out at all? And even like how you negotiated a contract or how you handled a certain relationship or conflict or challenges like did it actually show up in your day-to-day -day work do you think that it changed you know how you would make decisions and approach your work and think about things like that 100 percent. i mean everything wasn't always you know you know really perfect and there were some confrontational times and and different situations that arose that were challenging for me mm -hmm. i mean i'd rather have worked 80 hours a week working on you know, course planning and course development and HR issues and things like that <laughs> than have a confrontational conversation <laughs> yeah. with anybody. Yeah. I'd go out of my way to avoid that. But that's not possible when you're right. in leadership. You yeah. have to have those hard conversations. And there's just so many scriptures that um, I found throughout my time, especially, you know, as a manager, as a senior admin officer, where I just would rely on those scriptures, like mm. I would cling to those going into a meeting with somebody. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's what you meant or not, but really and truly, I couldn't have done it without God's Word, with the Holy, mm. without the Holy Spirit in my life. And yeah. you walk into a room, I tried to be, you know, prayed up and ready mm. for anything. That's really cool. Do you have like, sorry for putting on the spot, but do you have, any specific scriptures off the top of your head? Like, yeah, this one got me through a lot of tough conversations. Oh, this one got me through some angry faculty members. <laughs> James. Um, no, I meant scriptures, not names of faculty. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> James 3. Hello. There's something like James who's like working as a prophet lawyer right now. Like, wait, are they talking about me? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I maybe mean, prayed about him once. No, I'm just okay. kidding. <laughs> uh, I think, can I just... Yeah, I, I, I think it's. Do you have your Bible here? I don't have my Bible here, but I do have one of my little notebooks. Here. Your notebooks? Okay, cool. Yeah, pull it up. James three. Yeah, I was right. James three seventeen and eighteen. Um, but the wisdom that comes from the heavens is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Mm. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. And I have a note in my Bible, because I, you know, I have in there about the times that I've gone to that scripture, that passage yeah. for strength, for encouragement, mm. To do the hard things sometimes yeah and that passage just really meant and i had a note in there just saying um use our uh from god more times than i can count <laughs> so <laughs> uh, anyway so that's one of mine and the other one that i think is really important to me is james three twenty three. yeah um whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the lord not for men because i had a lot of situations too where um especially 
I think that's the most quoted scripture verse in our house while I was oh. growing up. <laughs> it's like that paper route, you are working unto the <laughs> Lord. <laughs> well, and that's, that's how I feel. Like, yeah. when you're doing it, if you do it for men, it falls short. Yeah. But when your purpose is to serve God, like, you do it with 150%. Mm. It's cool. Okay, so I- I'm sure there's some people who are listening to this or watching this right now and they're like okay it's great that you know it sounds great you had your career and you were you know obviously in a leadership position i'm sure you worked a lot i can confirm you worked a lot like you like you were when i was growing up and stuff like you would often you know be just like you'd work like quite a bit and and uh, it was like you're still like a great mom and very present and everything but you worked really hard and i had a cool role model of that um and uh and getting to see that but um, I'm sure there's some people who are like, okay, cool. So, you know, you worked really hard in your career and we talked about, you know, you're retired now and you spend all this time working for church and it's like, cool, yeah, maybe when I'm retired one day, I'll be able to serve in church. But I know that you never stop serving at church. Like you guys helped plant a church, like what, like a long time ago, many years, decades ago. Uh, you guys have been involved in church all the way through. Um, what did it look like for you? Like even in the midst of, of of being in your career and pursuing that and working really hard where God was calling you in the workplace for such a time as this, what did it look like at that same time to also be continuing to prioritize like the church community and serving in church and have what work was to you be bigger than um just your job and also like being a great mom at the same time too and raising a family and raising three kids that love the lord and are serving god um two pastors like two out of three ain't bad but uh, (laughs) i'm just kidding lisa's amazing um but what did it look like for you um to actually kind of navigate all those things all together all at once like how did you you balance that what did that look like um balance well i mean i didn't go back to work full time uh, until you were you were five years old when yeah. we went back to full time, and but before that, I mean, and even during that time, we were really involved at church. And I've always been involved in children's ministries yeah. at at New Life where we came from. Um, I ran the Wednesday night program while working mm-hmm. and raising a family. And the mm-hmm. Wednesday night program was my thing at one point. Um, Sunday mornings, I had. I had really great, for many years I taught the four and five year olds, yeah. that was kind of my my thing. And then 10 year old girls, that was also a rewarding time. Uh, so Sunday school teaching, uh, Wednesday night children's programs, um, very involved with our ladies groups that we had at the time, um, mentors for the youth group. We would go on youth retreats with the youth, you know, um, when we were younger and you still wanted us there. <laughs> uh, kind of thing. Um, as you know, your dad was on the board. He was on the board forever in yeah. different capacities. So there's a component of responsibility there as yeah. well. Um, and Lock leadership. up responsibility. Many, yes. many late yes. Sundays at church waiting for everybody to stop yes, talking. Yes, that's so true. <laughs> that's so true. Uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, we were very involved. And, and that's where our community was, though. Yeah. And it made it really easy for neighborhood children to come to our church because mm. they hung out with you guys. They hung out with Jonathan and Lisa. And, you know, there it was really easy to bring them because, I mean, that's where our heart was, too, mm. right? So we were really involved in, at church. We were involved in our community uh, with our neighbors. It, it wasn't all just church and work. There was community events we were involved yeah. in. Um, I was a volunteer forever at the with our home and mm. school and on the home and school executive when yeah. you guys were kids and yeah so that's kind of what that looked like even while I was working part-time roles full-time roles there was always some involvement I just um, we just felt that there was a need mm. and if God could use us to help fulfill that need then hey we're the hands and feet. Just put us to work, you know? <laughs> I love, like, asking you these questions because I think, like, one of the answers I feel like I've been fishing for is, I'm like, why? Like, why do you guys do this stuff? Like, I think for a lot of people, it's like, it's hard and it's uncomfortable and it's so easy to be like, well, like, I'm so busy with work and I'm so busy. Like, it's hard to, like, why would I add something else into the mix, right? Or um, whatever that looks like. And and it's, it's almost just, like, it's funny asking you this question because it seems like in your response, it's like, you don't even think about why it's no, but like God can use me, like He's gonna build His church, He's gonna build His kingdom through me. Yeah, like why wouldn't I do that? Of course I'll, you know, prioritize it and figure it out. Um, 
has it ever been hard though? Like, has that ever been like a really challenging thing? Um, whether that's in your faith or your personal walk with God or uh, in parenting and work and in church, I, like I'm living open-ended, but has that ever been like really hard to try and live out that calling across all these different spheres of life? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not easy because it's a, a busy lifestyle, but I'm going to go back to something that you were told when you were in university, mm-hmm. the first couple of years in university and you got involved at embassy yeah and your dad and i were a bit worried about your level of commitment right. your level of involvement how much you were doing and trying to do school and yeah. everything else you were doing and you said to us because it had been said to you i'm going to be busy doing something no matter what i might as <laughs> yeah. well be doing the lord's work <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and i kind of go back to that like it's my character to be like this to be honest so yeah. like i know this isn't this level or this pace may not be for everybody, mm-hmm. but if I wasn't serving God in this way, or when I was working, if I wasn't in the work, you know, work world doing things and in the community doing things, I'd be doing something. Yeah, you know. But this, I found there, there really, truly is a need, and if if somebody is lonely or feeling left out, get involved. Yeah, join together, like get in a community of of other people, like. Just, I mean, even just with um, Slate Kids, for example, yeah. that the group of volunteers there, you just you just learn something new from them every <laughs> single week. They're just yeah. amazing. I see the level of dedication and sincerity and, and just the authentic way they serve the Lord and mm-hmm. serve the kids because they really love them. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I guess that's my why. Yeah. Um, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Um, you know, Kind of, we're gonna wrap up here in just a second. Um, and thank you so much for everything you shared today, Mom. This has been really cool just to hear you talk about some of your experiences, but also your heart in this stuff. One last question that I wanted to ask is just, just kind of where you have gotten your strength from, and what it's kind of looked like for you to to be equipped and able to do all of this. How have you leaned into Jesus? How have you kind of made him? your rock and your firm foundation and your strength in the midst of everything that you've done throughout your life and and all the ways that you've worked and served him and all the things you've been involved with? Well, I believe there's so much benefit in corporate worship Mm -hmm. and gathering together corporately, but my strength really is comes those quiet times with Jesus. Yeah. Um, Just determined a long time ago when I first gave my heart to the Lord as a young wife, no children yet, working full time, I just, I found it necessary to go to God's Word, to start reading the Bible. I was thirsty and hungry for the Word yeah. of God, and I found it necessary for myself just to study the Scriptures, and I took Bible college courses, and I did studies, mm-hmm. and I, I just was hungry and thirsty for God's Word. So. For me, as much as I appreciate the corporate worship mm-hmm. scenario, I, for me, my strength really comes in those quiet times with God yeah. and, and daily Bible reading. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a series here at Slate Church about discipline. Yeah. And those, those things are deeply formed life. Yeah. And like those were such good reminders mm-hmm. of those foundational things in my walk with the Lord. Like it's just, it's just too precious of, an, of my walk with Jesus. It's just too precious of a relationship for me want to want to go about it half-heartedly. Yeah. Like, I just need God every day. Yeah. I ask for the Holy Spirit's filling. I, we pray, we, and we do that as a couple as well. That's really important to yeah. us. As a couple, we pray together, we read together, we study together. So, I mean, I think it, my strength definitely comes from the Lord, yeah. and especially those quiet one-on-one times with Him. It's cool, and and I also want to take a minute um, and just say thank you, um, thank you just for being an incredible mom and a leader in my life, and such a great example of all of this. Uh, it's funny as you're talking about that, like daily, like resting in God and like like you know spending that time with Him. We had these kind of. Uh, I was going to call them ugly. They weren't that ugly. They were just, you know, they got a little dated at a certain point. But we had these peach chairs, these peach-colored chairs uh, in our living room all while I was growing up. 
and we just called them the peach chairs it was like super like you know ingenious in terms of the name that we had for them but i just remember like every single morning when i woke up and i walked downstairs without fail mom and dad were like sitting in the peach chairs reading your bibles or reading a devotional book or spending some time in prayer and it was just role modeled for me every single day of my life of what it looked like to actually spend time with jesus and rest with him and you said you guys do this as a couple but we did it as a family and you guys brought me into that and gave me just such a great example of like a steadfast and consistent faith um, and i also want to honor and thank you for the example that you and for the example that dad have set for me in your leadership uh, in your uh, actually taking your career seriously and working hard and being faithful to what God has given you there. Um, dad as a teacher and often stepping in to like teach the toughest classes, becoming a supply teacher and going on like a special list for like the problem classes in Brantford, which like it's different than the problem classes in Waterloo. Uh, and um, But uh, what you guys have role modeled for me uh, in terms of your service in the church and your building the kingdom uh, and just as parents and the way that you've been able to bring all of that together and live this fully integrated life on mission for Jesus has been um, just really cool for me. So thank you so much. And I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to chat through this and share some of this with some others today. Awesome. Well, hey, that is our first set apart conversation. We're going to be doing a few of these over the rest of the series. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully this uh, blessed you and encourages you as you live out your life, your, uh, your calling, your purpose, what God has placed on you as you work.